Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our video for today. Would you join me for some breathing? Thank you. I hope that helped to get your brain ready for listening and learning. Today is Friday, May 22nd, 2020. I'm sorry there were no videos yesterday. I hadn't been feeling well the day before, and as you can tell, I do the videos the day before I post them. So I just wasn't feeling quite up to it, but I'm doing better, and I have videos for today, and I will again for next week. So never fear, I'm still around. Our word of the day is one that I'm pretty sure most of you haven't heard of, which is good. I wouldn't want to give you a bunch of easy words you already know. That would be rather boring, don't you think? This one begins with the letter I, which makes it sound, as does the M that comes next. Then comes the P. Remember that a P has a tail that goes under. Don't make a capital in the middle of the word. You know that we don't do that. Next, we have an E and an R. Now usually ER says ER, but in this case, the E is kind of making a long A sound. So this is gonna end up saying pear instead of per. Then comes an A, making the correct sound. The other trick with this word comes in the next section. We have T-I-V-E. Now you guys know that usually the E jumps over the consonant and makes the next vowel say its name. In this case, though, I guess the E got a little bit lazy, took the day off, decided, no, I'm not jumping. So the I just goes I here, okay? So that means this word then can be sounded out as imperative, imperative. If we do the syllables, hand under your chin, imperative, imperative. Now, imperative has two meanings. The first meaning for the word imperative means of vital importance. That means that it is so important, there's no argument about it. So, for example, I might say to you, it is imperative that you learn how to be good readers because it is very important, which is why we're still here working on it. The other meaning for imperative is a command or a request. So you're asking someone to do something. The reason I brought it up today is that we are going to be talking about how verbs are used in giving directions and instructions and how they need to be imperative verbs. So I'm going to explain that as soon as I put this up on the screen. There we go. Got it up there now. Okay. So remember the four things that we're focusing on in making good instructions are verbs, being clear, keeping it short, and showing as much as you tell. So today we're focusing on the verbs. Now, as I said, our word today is imperative and imperative verbs use the second meaning of the word imperative, which is a command or a request. Now it's quite different to say, let's eat and eat, right? If your mom says, eat your soup, that's a lot different than her saying, here's some soup, or would you like to eat some soup? An imperative verb tells you to do it, all right? Now, it doesn't mean that it's rude necessarily. It could say please at the end or something, like please eat your soup or please sit down. And teachers use these verbs a lot, if you'll notice. And that's because they're good for instructions. Now, remember the recipe that I gave you the other day? Some of the verbs that we used in that were preheat, mix, combine, add, bake, and do, which was used with do not. So if you think about those, a recipe is telling you what to do. It's giving you a command or a request. It's telling you this is what you need to do if you want this recipe to work. So try to remember that then. Imperative verbs are verbs that are telling you what to do. Okay, so you can try that out on your family. Just make sure you do it in a polite way. And then if they get irritated with you, say, hey, I'm just talking about imperative verbs. I'm just learning what I need to know. So you can use that if you like. When you give instructions, make sure to use them. We'll talk about more about instructions on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye now.